last week on Legally Kidnapped. Good evening. Our top story this week. A new study reveals that watching spastic television programs like SpongeBob SquarePants can cause short-term attention and learning problems in four-year-olds. In Illinois this week, foster parents are upset over the state's decision to cut off Catholic charities over the gay rights issue. In California, the LA Times is suing the child protective industry over the release of information regarding children who died under CPS watch or in their care. And a class action lawsuit brought on by a group of foster kids is dropped after a judge rules that they can't sue the state over high caseloads in the county's dependency court. In Florida, the child protective industry is in hot water with the feds for failing to pay overtime. Illegal aliens are using their anchor babies in order to cash in on TANF and welfare benefits. A Florida judge rules that one spank isn't domestic violence after a woman reports her husband over a single incident. And the Florida child protective industry is trying to get more money out of the state after the death of Nubia Barahona. The U.S.-based child abuse victims group is suing Pope Benedict for crimes against humanity. In Oklahoma, the child protective industry isn't paying much attention to the lawsuit brought on by the child advocacy group known as Children's Rights. Two Oklahoma CPS agents claim that they're being used as scapegoats in a politically motivated cover-up of systematic failures after failing to protect a little girl who died in her home. And Oklahoma's Department of Human Services promises to do a better job of informing the public of their failures in the future. In India this week, an orphanage is given 15 days to submit documents in regard to an investigation into suspected child trafficking. In Ireland, lots of people are seeking clarity on the country's new mandatory child abuse reporting laws. And in New Zealand, teachers are ratting parents out to the child protective industry about 43 times a day after the country makes it a crime for any adult to not report any suspicion of child abuse with a maximum penalty of 10 years in jail. In Australia this week, two lesbian foster parents dress up a little boy as a girl and post the humiliating pictures on Facebook. A group of Australian men who are abused while in state care are demanding compensation. There is a push to abolish the children's court in Victoria. And a new report reveals that at least one child dies in Victoria's foster care system every fortnight and another 20 are involved in assaults. In Canada, the death of a four-month-old Aboriginal boy in British Columbia's foster care system highlights major flaws in the system and family courts. A foster mother from Alberta is found guilty of manslaughter a second time after a three-year-old boy in her care died from a brain injury, and a woman agrees to be a surrogate mother for a couple. She gets pregnant with twins, the couple splits up, and then notifies her that they no longer want the babies. In England this week, the Child Exploitation and Online Protection Center has come under fire for transferring sensitive data without using encryption. British lawyers are making one million pounds a pop helping to snatch children while parents are going without legal representation. A young man tries to take his own life after being raped by a social worker in a Northamptonshire children's home, and of course the social worker denies the claims. British CPS agents steal a baby from a young mother because she had grown up in the foster care system, and children are being snatched at record levels in the UK. In entertainment news this week, Kate Goslin has no idea what she's going to do now that her show was cancelled, and Chaka Khan wins custody of her 10-year-old granddaughter from her druggy parents. A CPS agent from California gets 90 days in jail and three years of probation for child porn possession. In Florida, a foster mother goes to trial for the death of a little girl who has been missing since 2005. A Florida DCF executive loses her job after committing fraud by attempting to avoid paying her creditors by transferring her cigar and liquor license to herself. And in Louisiana, a foster mother gets busted for burning a two-year-old's legs and feet. In Maryland, a foster father is convicted of a child sex abuse charge. A foster parent from New York gets 15 years for molesting his foster son. In Pennsylvania, two parents are convicted of murdering a little Russian orphan who they adopted. And in Arizona, the sickest bitch in the history of legally kidnapped gets busted for abusing a 10 year old who she adopted by shoving dog feces in his mouth, taping it shut so he couldn't spit it out, and shoving a toothbrush up his ass. In Maryland this week, the Kennedy Krieger Institute is being sued for exposing poor black kids to dangerous lead paint hazards during a housing study in the 90s. In Minnesota, a mother is in trouble for attacking a CPS agent in a family courthouse by grabbing his tie and asking why he was stealing her kids. In Nebraska, the governor admits that the state has failed to execute the necessary
necessary reforms to protect vulnerable children. In New Hampshire, a mom is upset after the school confiscates a small American flag from her autistic son, citing the shot point at the end as a danger to others. In Oregon, a lawsuit is filed against the Boy Scouts of America after a scout leader molested scouts back in the 70s during a camping trip. Ten foster siblings from New York are suing the child protective industry after being improperly adopted out by ACS and abused by the women who adopted them. A New York couple is suing over a wrongful child abuse allegation after their daughter was searched and questioned while at school based on someone calling the hotline to say that he heard something from others. And a group of New York foster kids who are separated from their siblings while in the system get to reunite for a whole week at a summer camp. In Tennessee, a foster kid and his foster father drowned on a fishing trip. A Florida boy and his dad are missing after CPS agents responded to a hotline call. When nobody was home, they called in the SWAT team, busted down the door, but police are still refusing to put out an Amber Alert. And finally, tonight in Rhode Island, an adoptee who fought for passage of a new law reunites with her birth family after finally getting to see her original birth certificate. For these stories and all the latest dirt on the child protective industry, visit www.legallykidnapped.com. And until next week, this is Baby LK, over and out.